Good morning, everybody. Robert here. Today's workout is called low back exercises for seniors. And your low back is this area of your body right here. Okay? That's what we're going to work. And for the warm up today, we're going to do a little bit of balance. And I want you to know that just standing here on the floor is difficult at times for some of us. Just standing here. Sometimes we have to hold on to something. Sometimes we got to watch what we're standing on too. If I stand on the floor like this, it's a lot easier because it's a hard floor than if I stood on this mat. So if I'm standing here at the stove and I'm standing on the mat, it could be more dangerous for me. So I got to be careful as to what I'm standing on. But anyway, I'm going to just for fun today, give myself a little bit of a challenge and I'm going to do the warm up standing on the mat. And I'm going to start with some balance exercises, some simple balance exercises, because remember our core muscles are all about keeping us from falling over and balance is about being strong in our core so we don't fall over. So maybe I'll hold on to something, maybe I won't. Maybe I'll push this mat a little bit closer to the stove and the counter, hold my one hand onto the counter, and then I'm gonna raise one foot off the floor, keeping my legs straight, and I'm just going to do some simple little swings back and forth. I'm warming up my core muscles, my four main core muscles. Yep, I've got a diaphragm in here for breathing. Am I breathing? Of course I am, because I am talking. But is my diaphragm going way up and way down because I'm taking deep breaths? Not yet. I'm busy talking here. I'll worry about the diaphragm in a minute. Notice I'm just swinging my leg back and forth. Yep. And I have these muscles that go around the middle of my body where my belly button is, close to my spine, like a girdle. And they're called transverse, meaning back and forth, abdominus, meaning abdomen. So my transverse abdominus are holding me up so I can stand on one foot. That's enough for that one. I'm going to put that foot down, still holding onto the counter, raise the other one and balancing on the other leg, keeping my leg straight and I'm swinging it back and forth. Just warming up here. So I have a transverse abdominus and a diaphragm. I also have multifidus muscles. There's only four, by the way, uh, core muscles. Multifidus run through your legs up through your bum and onto your spine like this, holding you very stable. Each vertebrae is held with multifidus muscles. So you don't fall over front to back. Still swinging my leg here. Good. Now put that down, have a little rest. Now I'm gonna lift my other leg up again and I'm gonna swing it in front of my body like this, back and forth. Right, side to side, back and forth. You can let go and try to do it with no hands. A lot harder, or hold on to a counter or something, chair. So my fourth muscle are my cagle muscles, and they're in my pelvic floor. This is my pelvis here, and there's a, a hammock attached to each hip. It's holding all my important mus or organs in my, um, my core here, my abdomen, all right, all those important organs. Let's have a little rest with that foot. And so the hammock's holding up all the important organs in my abdomen, like my bladder, and down there there's a few tubes and a few muscles that are keeping everything in place here, all these organs, swinging this leg in front, back and forth. <clears throat> and the kegel muscles are in the pelvic floor, in the hammock. And I have to learn how to work those so that they're stronger, so that everything is held in place here. Because if these, you know, my pancreas and my gallbladder and my, my stomach and bladder, if that all gets shifted in the wrong, wrong spot, then I'm going to fall over. Okay, put that down. And then one more, have a little rest for a sec. Good, and I'm gonna just balance on the other leg, and I'm gonna lift my knee up as high as I can, and put it down, but don't touch the floor. Just lift it up, and put it down. Warming up my core muscles, up. My muscles that prevent me from falling over, up. 
and down. Right, so don't forget those Kegel muscles and I'll show you how to get them stronger later on in the video. Up and down, three more. Up, try to do 10 of these. Up and one more. Up and down. So last part here of the warm up, shift my leg to that leg or my weight to that leg and lift this one up. As high as I can go down, don't touch the floor. Up. Can I do this with no hands? I don't know. Up. I can do a few and then I have to hold on up and down. So my foot is parallel to the floor. That means I could put it right down and touch the floor or maybe do it without resting. If you have trouble with this, you can come up and go down and come up and go down, lifting your knee nice and high. You could do it that way. But this morning, I'm doing it this way. It doesn't mean you have to do it this way. You can do it any way you want, as long as you're standing nice and tall and you're balanced and you're not going to fall over and you've done 10 of each. One more. Yes, I was counting. So that's your warm up. We talked about the four main core muscles. On with the lesson. All of the golden eight exercises are great, but there's three of them that focus on your core muscles that prevent you from falling over more than the other, other five. So we're gonna do those three important golden eight energy balancing exercises. The first one is called reach for happiness. I'm standing in neutral here. My posture's good. You know, my, my uh, head is in, in, I'm not going like this or looking, I'm just in, in neutral here. I'm pushing my chin in a little bit. Something's pulling the top of my head up. My shoulders are down and relaxed and back a little bit. I feel good. There's a little bit of a softness going on in my knee joints, but I'm pretty good, much straight legged. And then I'm going to take a breath in. I'm going to, you know, use that diaphragm. I'm going to take a breath in, big breath in. And then I'm going to look up and push the breath overhead. And when I get up here, I'm going to go up in the balls of my feet for a little bit and come back down. And then I'm going to lean back, arching my back, straighten up, and then I'm coming back down. So there's a lot of breathing sections to that, right? With big, deep breaths. But I just want you to worry about, to get that diaphragm going, to take a deep breath in as you bring up the positive energy and then blow out whenever you need to and breathe whenever you need to after that. So we're going to do three of these. So here we go. I'll do it from front on first. So I take a deep breath in. I'm up on the balls of my feet, put my heels down, lean back, a little bit of an arch, straighten up, arms go to the side, slowly. Okay, that's number one. Number two, same thing. Big deep breath in. When I take that deep breath in, of course, if, I, if it's a nice big deep breath, my diaphragm is going to um, push the uh, abdomen down and my belly button's going to go out. That's what's going to happen. So as I breathe in, the diaphragm pushes down to make room for the air. So here I go. Up on the balls of my feet. Down on my heels. Arch my back. Just a little. Straighten up. And come down slowly. And the last one. Here I go. Can you see my heels? They're off the ground. Lower them. Lean back. Not too far. Straighten up. And down I go. You know, I should do one more from this angle. Why not go around in a circle? This is the hardest part. I'm up on the balls of my feet. And down and go my heels. Lean back a little bit more. Not too far though. Straighten up and lower my arms slowly. Number two, 
Number two is around the world. I'm gonna put my hands on my hips. I'm still standing in neutral. I'm gonna to try to tighten my Kegel muscles in my pelvic floor so that I don't pee, you know, squeeze the urethra. So there, I got them tight, and I'm just going to lean forward, push my bum back, keep kegling, keep kegling, keep kegling. Then I'm gonna to turn to one side just a little bit and have a peek. And then I'm gonna come back to where I was, turn to the other side and have a peek, come back to where I was. Am I still kegling? I don't know. Forgot about the kegel muscles and straighten up again. Better try that again. Now why are my hands on my hips? Because these fingers on my hip bones here, if I kegel, I should feel a little twinge in there and I'll know that my kegel are working. Let me try, kegel, kegel. Kegel and hold, here I go, bend over, not too far, turn to one side a little bit, back to center, there's Twyla, turn to the other side, hold those Kegel muscles, back to center, and up I go again. So the Kegel muscles are in my pelvic floor, squeezing on my urethra so I don't pee. You got that? I gotta do it one more time. So Kegel, bend over, Turn to one side, back to center, turn to the other side, keep kegling, back to center, and up I go. Good, that was around the world, even though I only went halfway around the world this morning. The golden eight number three is look back and let go. So I'm going to do a little bit of a squat as I raise my arms up, just a little one. See, my knees came forward. I'm still standing up pretty tall. I can lean forward a little bit so I don't fall over. And then I just do a little trunk rotation here. Look back. Oh, my knives are back there. And my garbage. Recycling. And let go. So I'm ready to go. I'm not going to fall over. I do a little bit of a squat. Bring up my arms. I'm stable. All my core muscles are working wherever they are. Look back. Hey, I see some tomatoes. I'll eat those later. Come back to the front, let go. I'm not gonna talk this time, I'm just gonna do both sides. Here I go. One last time. I should be able to go even further when I look back. Because my low back is warming up and my obliques on the sides of my body are warming up. So look back and let go around the world, only halfway around the world with the Kegel muscles. And then reach for happiness, something we all need, right? There was a man who worked at the University of Waterloo in Ontario, Canada. His name was Stuart McGill. And you can look him up on YouTube. I'll leave his link to his back exercises in the description. But Stuart McGill is now retired. But he is one of the, the two most famous back experts in the world. And he's all about exercises um, to strengthen your low back. He's not really necessarily about operating on your low back. So anyway, I'm going to show you three Stuart McGill exercises, and I want you to watch very closely, listen very closely, and I want you to practice these every day. So the first one, um, and by the way, um, you might think I'm in my underwear. Well, you're right. Um, but I've put on um, this shirt so you can see my back a little bit better. And I'm going to be showing you my low back. So you've got your your tailbone right there, and you got your hips, you can feel the bony hips, and then you got your low back with your vertebrae that go up, and each vertebrae, vertebrae is about the size of a good size ice cube. And so you know that the multifidus muscles come up here through the, the bum and join on to the, the vertebrae all the way up your spine, but we're concentrating on our low back. So if you feel right um, on either side of the, the spine, right about there, you'll be able to feel some multifidus muscles. 
And if you just bend over, you'll feel them even more. Even up here, you'll feel them tighten up. So the first muscle, uh, the first exercise we're going to do is going to be focusing on those multifidus muscles. We want them to be strong. I'm going to show you how to make them strong. So I got to get down on the floor, and if you um, need a chair or some something, a counter to get yourself down there safely, go right ahead and get down on the floor. And I want you to get into your table position, your hands and knees. So I can go down in a, I'm pretty good at squatting, so I can squat down like this. Maybe I should put my feet shoulder width apart, my toes straight ahead, and push my tailbone back, keep my head up, and reach for the floor. Good. Then I'll put down my good knee, and then my bad knee, and then I'm now into the table position. So when I'm in the table position, my hands are right below my shoulders. My hips are right above my knees. My head's in neutral. I'm not straining it in any way. I'm just in the table position right here. And what I want to do to be able to work those multifidus muscles that go up along my spine, I want to get myself in the neutral position. I want to be not sagging too much with my bum up my stomach down. I don't want to be like that. That's the cow or the camel. And I don't want to be a cat. I don't want to round my back out, sucking my belly button in and rounding my back with a pelvic tilt. I don't want to do that. I want to be right in the middle. But before I can get into the middle in a comfortable position, I'm going to do the cow and the cat. And when I do the cow, I'm going to lift my head up and push my bum up and sag my belly button down. Right? Just let it flop down. Some people do this. They don't move their head at all. They just let their, do the pelvic tilt and let their belly button head toward the floor. Some people lift their head up. Some don't. It's up to, depending on your neck. So I'm just going to lift my head up a little bit and look straight ahead. Get my bum in the air. Let my belly sag down to the floor. A, a couple of seconds. And then I'm going to bring my hips forward and bring my chin into my chest and round out my back and straighten my arm and put some pressure on my shoulders to push myself up. Of course, my feet, my um, hands, the fingers are spread and my pointer fingers are straight ahead. That gives me some stability. Keep the hands below the shoulders. Anyway, so I'm going to do the cat. Three or three seconds is enough. Then I'm going to go back to the cow. And I'm warming up my low back, my lumbar spine, and my multifidus muscles. Warming them up. Telling all the connective tissues that are close by to wake up, we need your help. Plus the multifidus muscles that are very important for stability so you don't fall over. So I'm doing my cow cat. Just a warm up here. Good. I'm not in a hurry. I'm trying to breathe. If I really want to work my diaphragm, as I do that cat, I suck my, um, sorry, I blow out so I can suck my belly button in. So I'm going to take a deep breath, fill up my abdomen here, and then go into the cat and blow out and suck my belly in. So you can either warm up with the cow and the cat very slowly without worrying about your diaphragm, but once you're, you're good at the diaphragm breathing with the big deep breaths, work it with the cow cat. So good, now I'm in neutral. And you know what, if somebody was around that could actually look at your multifidus muscle that goes, muscles that go along either side of your spine, as you do the exercise here, in the neutral position, right? No cow, no cat, neutral. As you do the exercise that I'm going to show you, this should not move. If it starts to round or go in or out, you're not doing it right. You got to keep this stable. Hold it there. That's the exercise. Hold it there. And when you move your arm, it's going to put pressure on those um, 
core multifidus muscles, and if it doesn't move, then you're working it. Now, you're thinking that it doesn't move. It doesn't feel like it's rounding or flopping down. But if somebody could watch that part of your back while you lifted your arm, just to see. And if you can't lift your arm up very high and you can only move it a little bit, that's okay, but maybe you'll be able to get it straight out. Keeping that multifidus spine motionless, still, no movement. Now, how many of these do you do? I'll just do one more on each side. You can do as many as you want. Now, I'm going to try it with my leg. One leg at a time. I'll move forward a little bit here so I can only hit the, the cupboard. I'm in neutral. All right, I'm going to check to see if I'm in neutral. There's the cow. There's the cat. I'm halfway. All right, I want to hold that, and I'm going to take my leg and stick it out. But you know what? To do that so I don't fall over, and i got to keep my proper position, I'm going to move this knee in the middle and lift this one straight out. Now, I don't know what happened to my back. If my back arched in any way, up or down, I, I, I'm, not, I'm not strong enough to do it. So maybe I'll bring my leg down a little bit, lower the hip on that side just to keep it stable. And then it's really great if somebody can watch your multifidus muscles. I'll try the other side. So I'll move this knee over a little bit. So I'm like a tripod. Two, three, one, two, three. Okay, here we go. Now I gotta keep my back flat the best I can and not moving as I lift my leg up. Lower my hip, move it in a little bit, and lift it up. Now I'm going to take my knees and put them back underneath my shoulders. Maybe I'll try a, an easier version of that. I'll just lift my hand off the floor a little bit. I wish I could see what's going on behind me. But it feels like it's, it's still in neutral back there. You know, if I... No, can't do it. I, I'm just going to have to hope that it's not moving. Lift my hand up. Lift my other hand up. And you can hold it as long as you want because that's the exercise. You can move it out slowly, bring it back, put it down, and hope that this doesn't move. Try my leg, lift it up. Lower my hip a little bit on that side. Hope that everything is flat and there's no none of this cow or cat thing going on. Try the other side. This is a Stuart McGill move. He'll show you on his channel if you really want to see the master at work. Maybe I've left out a few things, maybe not. So that's the cow-cat warm-up. And that's the multifidus exercise. You might have seen people do this. That's what they're doing, but they're at a different level than we are. If you can do that and keep this stable, and then maybe move your finger and your big toe around a little bit and keep this stable, you're way ahead of the rest of us. And on both sides, right? So that's the cow-cat multifidus low back exercise that's important, number one. I'm going to show you two different ones now. Uh, low back exercise number two. Now remember, we've talked about the transverse abdominis, the girdle muscle that goes close to your spine around where your belly button and your low back is. That's the one we're going to work now, okay? It's very important too. So we're already on the floor. All we have to do is get on our side. So I'm going to get on my side, on my hip there, and on my forearm. Hopefully you can get this far. And then I'm going to try to straighten my legs out. Hey, I can do that. Resting the weight of my body on my forearm, my shoulders working there, my forearms working, my hips doing that. 
I'm going to take the top leg and put it over top of the bottom leg. I'm going to make sure that from my shoulders right down past my belly button, my knees and my feet are all in one straight line. And I'm resting on my hips. Well, of course, that's where the transverse abdominus muscle goes, just above your hips, around your spine, right there. And to get your body off of the floor, you're going to work that transverse abdominus muscle. So I better straighten my legs again. They were kind of, I was kind of like a banana. I don't want to be like a banana. Like that. So if this is hard enough for you, just resting on your hip, resting on your forearm, holding that straight line, that's great. And you're working your transverse abdominus. But if you can get the hip off the floor, that's another level. So I'm going to use my hand here, might as well, and push down on the floor and see if I can use the, my feet, my forearm, and my hand and get those hips up off the floor just a little bit. So I'll try it. So push, push, push everything up. One, two, three, and down. Hey, that's pretty good. I did it. Some people can't go past this, but if you practice this position enough, and then maybe pushed with the hand, you know, pushed with your fingertips, and you could get your hips up just a little bit and come down. That's better than nothing. Because eventually you'll be able to get it up, and you might even be able to get your arm up so that this arm is over top of this shoulder. Line up your shoulders, right? So I'm pushing down with the forearm, I'm pushing down with my legs, and I'm working my low back, by keeping it stable and not doing any crazy movement and I'm working my transverse abdominus to hold myself up there. Wow! And down. So let's just try it one more the easy way. Here's level one. Here's level two. One, two, three. Rest. Again. One, two, three, rest. One more time. One, two, three. Transverse abdominus girdle muscle going around my low back and my belly area. Rest. I could do up to 10 of those maybe someday. Not today, I'm gonna to switch around and just see if I can do one on the other side, just so that you get the hang of it. So. Push my mat away from the stove there. Top leg, leg goes over top of the bottom one. I'm on the sides of my feet. I'm pushing down on the sides of my feet. My toes straight from the shoulder, right straight down. Maybe I'll use my hand here. This is level one right here. Level one, keeping everything tight in the low back transverse abdominus area. Let's just try one up off the floor. Here we go. One, two, three, up. Straight up and down. Rest. Again, up. Down. And one more up. Show off time. So that would be level three. This is level two. This is level one. Yes, there's a level four. We're not going there today. How many should you do? I try to do 10 of these, whether you're just here, and then you go, okay, rest. Do it again, okay, rest. And do 10 of them, or go maybe a few of them off the floor. One, two, three. If you can't do that, just up a little bit and come back right back down. See if you can do 10 on this side and 10 on the other side, transverse abdominus. Good luck. So this time I'm going to do the Transverse abdominus muscle. I'm doing the multifidus muscle. I'm doing the diaphragm breathing muscle. And I'm doing the cagle muscle in my pelvic floor all at the same time. Sounds complicated, but it's the easiest looking one. And it feels easy, at least for me, because I've practiced and practiced and practiced this exercise. And practice makes permanent. So I'm going to somehow get down on my back and lie down. So I could go down this way, or I could just go down on my side, safer that way, and turn over. And where's my pillow? I don't know. I'll do it without the pillow on my head. 
Okay, I'm going to turn my body this way because I have to straighten one leg. So, I've got one foot with the foot flat on the floor and the knees bent. The other one is straight. My arms are just here at my sides and I'm going to flex the foot. That means point the toe to my head, flex the foot. When I do that, it tightens up my calf muscle, my gastrocnemius muscle, and it tightens up my soleus muscle in the front under the shin in there. So it does that when I flex my foot. When I straighten my leg, it starts to engage my hamstrings and my quads. But you know, if my leg is tight because of the hamstrings and the quads, I can't get my leg really straight unless I maybe push down on the knee, but I don't want to do that. So I want to get the leg straight as I can get it, and then I'm going to use my brain and tell my leg to get really straight and flatten out. Flex the foot. So I do have that natural curve in my spine. I want to keep the natural curve there. I don't want to flatten my back. I don't want to do a pelvic tilt and flatten my back. I want to keep the natural curve there. And if I can't do that when I'm doing the exercise, I'm going to put my hands under there, right under, so that, or I could put a towel or something under there so that I can't push my low back down. So I'll put my hands there just in case. Yep, now some people have a problem with their shoulders, so they won't be able to bend their arm up like that. You get the towel, put it under there. But I think I can handle this. So one leg is bent, foot flat. One leg is straight, flexed foot. Pushing down my whole leg is getting it as straight as possible. Now, when I do all this, it engages not only my multifidus muscles that run up my back and up my spine when I hold everything really tense, but it engages my transverse abdominus muscle. But I have to tell my pelvic floor cagle muscles to tighten up and I have to breathe to work my diaphragm. So here I go. The exercise is going to look like this. Everything's tight. I lift my head off the floor just my head, about two centimeters. If my shoulders come up a little bit, good, but I don't think about them. I just lift my head straight up. I don't bend my neck like this. No, I don't arch like this. I just bring my head straight up, two centimeters. That's the only thing that moves. Head comes up. I hold it there. I push my leg flat into the floor. That tightens up all the muscles. And then I take deep breaths in through my nose, out through my mouth, watch my belly go up and down. Here I go. Blow out. And down I go. Switch sides. So this foot's flat, this leg is straight, this foot, foot is flexed to tighten everything up. I still got the nice arch in my low back. I'm going to lift my head up. I'm going to take the deep breath first and then I'm going to lift my head up. I think I'll do it that way this time. Here I go. Yeah, that kind of worked. What about my Kegel muscles in my pelvic floor? How do I do those? I have to use my brain. I got to say to the Kegel muscles, I have to pee, but I can't pee right now because I'm busy with you. So I'm going to squeeze my cable muscles in my pelvic floor so my urethra doesn't let the pee out of the bladder. So I gotta do that. Kegel, flex my foot, hands underneath the low back, everything's tight, push my leg down and take a big breath in. Up I go. And relax. One more on each side. Well, as to think about, it doesn't hurt anywhere, so I'm okay. If this bothers you, you can just take the arms out. But if you push your low back in to get your head up, then you're doing it wrong. So maybe I won't. One more on each side, then I'm done. Rest. Just two centimeters with the head. I took a deep breath in and I think I sucked my belly button in instead of pushing my belly button out because my diaphragm was going down. It was what a confusing mess. I got to practice that deep breathing. Here we go. Last time. Whoop, other side. Ugh. 
press. Lots to think about. Turn on my side. Help myself up halfway slowly. Sit here and say, have fun. It's time for the cool down. We worked really, really hard learning all about our core muscles. We know how to strengthen them now. We just need to practice them every day. Anyway, the cool down, we're going to slow down everything. We're going to use the three golden eight energy balancing core muscle exercises that we did in the warm up because they're so wonderful. And we're going to add one more. So the first one is reach for happiness. And remember, we're going to take a deep breath and use our diaphragm. Here we go. Big breath in, diaphragm. Blow out. Open the balls of my feet. Heels go down, lean back. Straighten up, relax. One more. Around the world. Hands on my hips, fingers on the inside of my hip bones there, looking for my Kegel twinge, Kegel in my pelvic floor, bend over, push my bum back, keep my legs straight, halfway, am I still Kegling? Look to the left or the right, look to the left or the right, still Kegel, center, and straighten up. Now, Kegel. Focus on my Kegel muscles, tighten them up. I'm not tightening my glute, glute muscles, they're relaxed. I'm tightening my Kegel muscles in my pelvic floor. Squeezing the urine tube, the urethra. Okay, squeeze the urethra and push my hips back. We're going around the world halfway. Good, I think I held my Kegel muscles. We're going around the world halfway, but we're going the other way. So follow me, I'll go very slowly. Kegel, around the world. Hips forward, push my body one way, looking at the ceiling, push my body the other way, looking at the ceiling, and straighten up in neutral. I think I forgot my Kegel muscles. Kegel. Tighten kegels, good. Wow, I gotta still breathe. I gotta still use the diaphragm the best I can, but I gotta concentrate on my pelvic floor and tighten those kegel muscles. I'm gonna have to work on the kegel muscles. By the way, you can kegel even if you're sitting down watching TV or driving a car. Yeah. Okay, last time. Here we go. Kegel. Hips forward. I look one way with my hips. And there I go. Around the world. Look back and let go. A little bit of a squat. Trunk rotation. Boy, I can go all the way now, almost halfway around. All that exercise has helped make my low back stronger. I can twist more. So my feet are pointing straight ahead, remember? And I'm pushing my knees forward over the center of my feet. Not too much though. Pushing down on the pads on the bottom of my feet. All those pads pushing down to stabilize myself, and I can do the look back and let go. Push my hips back, just a little. And the last part. And I'm not in a hurry, and you know what? I never even fell over. That's pretty good. So I did the, reach for happiness, 
I did halfway around the world and I even tried going around the world the other way, the other half. That's pretty good. I did my look back and let go. But the last one is called Bend for Health and it's a golden eight energy balancing exercise too. So really we're, we're doing four of the golden eight this morning in our cool down. So here we go. I'm in neutral. Everything's neutral. You know what that means. Tuck your chin in. Good. Get those ears over top of your shoulders. And the arms go out to the side as I take my big deep breath. They're very, very straight. And they come right up close to my ears and they're very, very straight. Now with straight legs and straight arms, I'm going to hinge at the hips slowly and see if I can touch the floor with my fingers. Don't bend at the knee, that's cheating, that's a different exercise. Yep, I touch the floor barely and I come up the front of my body to attention again. Okay, so here I go. Bend for health. Straight arms, straight arms. Keep my head between my arms the whole time. Push my hips back. Keep my legs straight. See if I can touch the floor. And then I swoop my palms up the front of my body and relax. Last time. Bend for health. Yep, I touched, but barely. And up I go. I guess I'm going to have to do more of this low back exercises for seniors. This is the stretch portion of the workout. I try to end all of my workouts with a stretch. And I was stretching all kinds of different ways in the past when I finished my workout stretching my upper body parts and my lower body parts and having a good stretch. But I never, ever, ever held the stretches for very long. Sometimes I held them for 10 seconds. Sometimes I was very ambitious and I held them for maybe 30 seconds, but never any longer than that. I thought I was doing good, good enough at 10 or at 30 seconds. And then I talked to Dr. Chris Rayner from Human 2.0 about the stretch and how to do it properly. And he said to me, if you don't hold the stretch, hold those warm muscles that you worked so hard at strengthening in a stretch position for two minutes, that's 120 seconds. He said for two minutes, you're really not uh, stretching to your potential. In other words, you're not getting the most out of that workout that you could if you lasted 120 seconds. So I thought, okay, you know, I can't just exercise all day long with intention. I know I move around a lot, but I can't just exercise with intention all day long. I gotta, I gotta go shopping and I gotta work in my garden. And so I thought, I know what I'll do. At the end of every workout, and I work out every day of the week, I'm only going to stretch one body part. And of course, today we did our low back, so I wanna stretch my low back. So here I have my little mat. And I have my little zebra uh, pillow for my head that I got at a thrift store. And on the other side, it's got a tiger. And that pillow reminds me of my trip to Africa and to India. You don't find tigers in Africa. And I put that down there for my head. And I want you to watch closely. I'm going to work my low back. It's a stretch. We can all do this. So I'm going to lie down, put my head on my favorite pillow just to support my cervical spine up here by my neck. And I'm on a little bit of a raised mat. And I think you can see me okay. My feet are flat, my legs are bent. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna do the figure four stretch. And it's called figure four because it looks like a four. And it also works my low back and everything connected with my low back. It's a great stretch. So I'm lying here, this is pretty good by itself, and I'm putting my low back in neutral, which means it has a bit of a curve. And then I'm gonna lift one leg, doesn't matter which one, and I'm gonna put the leg, the ankle, just above the knee. 
Now, I can feel that in my bum area, a little bit of my hip area, but in my bum, my hip area on that side. And that's my piriformis muscle, and it's supporting my low back, and it's also connecting my low back to my femur, or my big bone in my leg. And it's also connecting my bum to my low back, to my leg. It's doing a lot. So I'm just holding it there. I can feel it right there. It's very tight. And I'm holding it for 120 seconds, according to Dr. Chris Rayner, human 2.0. Anyway, you want to look him up. He's got some great videos too. So if this isn't doing much for my my low back and my piriformis muscle, I'm going to bring my heel on the foot that's on the floor in a little bit closer to my bum. Oh, now I can feel it a little bit more. Oh yeah. Is it two minutes yet? Not quite, but that's been one minute. So I'm thinking, yeah, that's pretty good. I'll just lie here, relax everything, except my figure four is working hard on my piriformis, which is working hard, helping my low back muscles. So I think maybe I can make it a little harder. So if I want, I can just take that foot that's on the floor, that flat foot that's on the floor, and lift it off the ground. Okay. <laughs> now I know I'm working. I know I'm stretching. I'm thinking, hurry up, 120 seconds. So I had three options there. That's two minutes. Here goes the foot down to the floor. And then I'm going to take my figure four leg off of the other one and put it down. Wow. Take a deep breath. So I'm going to do the other side now. I'm going to turn my body around so you can see me. Do it the other way. Maybe I'll get a little closer to you. Where's my pillow? Okay, so I'm just lying here in neutral. Have I got that nice arch in my low back? Yep. Like I'm not pushing my uh, hips in any way to try to make that arch any bigger or smaller. I'm not flattening it out. I'm keeping it just where it likes to be. My feet are flat on the floor. Right, I put my one heel above the knee on the other leg to make the figure four. And as soon as I do that, I feel the piriformis in my hip and in my glute. Because it runs from my low back to my upper leg. So, my hamstring there. So, oh, it's going through my bum. Anyway, I can feel it right there. Is it, is it good enough for two minutes? Maybe I can make it level two. Taking that heel on the floor and sliding it in a little bit toward my bum. You know? Now I can feel it more. Is it bearable? Yes. Is it painful? Well, if it was, I would back off the heel there and I might even take this off. But, or maybe do a di different exercise. But no, I'm going to put that up there and I'm going to slide my heel in. That's almost one minute. Time flies when you're having fun. And now I think I'll try level three. That means I'm going to take the foot that's flat on the floor and lift it off the floor a little bit. Okay, <laughs> I hear there's even a fourth level. Well, not for me, at least not today. Maybe if I work at this enough, I'll be able to go to level four. This is a good workout stretch to end a great low back exercises for seniors. And by the way, you might want to share this channel with all these great exercise routines or workouts or call them whatever you want, you might want to share that with your friends because I'm sure you have a few senior friends who could use some strength in their body. And I've got lots of good stuff on my channel. If you hit the subscribe button because you have a Gmail account, so you're allowed to hit the subscribe button and comment, and hit the bell to be reminded when I post the next video. That's all making the world a lot easier for you. 
you don't have to pay any attention to looking to see if I've got anything new up there. It'll just remind you. Technology is wonderful. Hey, by the way, Robert, stop talking. My leg is bent in the figure four. The other foot is off the ground and that's been two minutes. So I'm gonna put my heel down, release this leg, slowly put it down and just relax for a second. That's the end. Don't forget about the drink cup, it's coming next. I think I'll have a little sleep here. By the way, when your legs are straight out, you're putting weight on your low back. Not very much, but you're putting some weight on your low back. When you bend your legs like this and put your feet flat on the floor, you're reducing the amount of pressure on your low back. So there you go. So see you at the drink up. See you next time. Hit the subscribe button. Over and out. Welcome to today's drink up. Today's um, workout was all about core muscles and falling over. And there are about 35 different groups of core muscles in your body. Remember, the core muscles are not the same as the surface muscles. The core muscles are close to your spine. The surface muscles are close to the skin. They do different things. The core muscles prevent you from falling over. They say that as you age, your biggest danger is falling over and breaking something. And when you do that, you won't be able to move as much and then you won't live as long. That's the bottom line. So you want to work on those core muscles as much as possible. And it's not difficult to do that. But there are four main ones and I'll just tell you what they are quickly and where they are. And you don't have to remember the names, but maybe it would be kind of a cool idea if you look them up on the internet. The first one is your diaphragm. And the diaphragm, of course, is right here below your ribs. And it brings in oxygen into your body and it's very, very important. So the breathing part of your exercise, whenever, whenever you're exercising, you gotta breathe properly so that your diaphragm can move freely up and down in your body cavity at the front. It's the first one, the diaphragm. Don't forget it's spelled with a G and a PH. It's got a G in it and a PH. The second one is your um, transverse abdominus. And the transverse abdominus goes around your middle where your belly button is and your low back like a girdle. And it prevents you from falling over sideways. Your multifidus muscles, they're the ones that come through your legs, the back of your legs, and up through your bum and go onto your spine like this to keep your spine stable. They're kind of little muscles and they hold each vertebrae in place from the bottom where your, your tailbone is right to the top where your brain is all the way up. And of course, they're a little thicker and a little bigger near, near the bottom um, in your low back. And they prevent you from falling over from front to back multifidus. And then the fourth one are your Kegel muscles. K-E-G-E-L. Kegel muscles. And they're in your pelvic floor. And if you imagine your hips have a hammock attached to each hip bone and the hammock sitting there and it's holding all of your organs in your um, body cavity. And things like your bladder, for example, and your, your bladder, of course, um, has a, a tube that goes from the bladder out to the outside of your body called your urethra. And in that urethra are some Kegel muscles. But there's lots of Kegel muscles in your pelvic floor. And that, um, those Kegel muscles do a lot of support, keeping all those important organs in their proper spots. So you've got to practice Kegeling. And I showed you how to do a little bit of the kegling today in the, in the video, but you might want to look up, how do I kegel? How do I strengthen my kegel muscles? That's the fourth one. Okay, so the diaphragm with a G for breathing, 
transverse abdominis, the girdle for falling over sideways, multifidus, the ones that run up through your back on your spine, falling over front to back, and your kegel muscles, which keep you everything organized and in place. Gives you a lot of strength, keeps you stable. Okay, over and out.